you're looking to start a go high level SaaS business, but your budget is on the smallish side. My name is Pamela Dale, your GHL gal. Stay with me. I'm going to show you how to get started with a limited budget. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're dropping stuff like this all the time. So you've seen or heard of Go High Level, but you're not a large marketing agency or a business coach that has 400 clients. You've got a limited budget. Maybe this is one of your first steps into the marketplace with software or with a business online. And SaaS, Go High Level, absolutely one of the best choices out there, I think. And it can be done. That's the first thing I want to say is that it can be done. You're going to, at any time you go to start a business, you're looking at time or money. So limited money, we're going to go hard on time. And you're going to need to be smart. When you step out into the marketplace, you're not going to listen to the bullshit advice that's out there. Stay with me. I've done this before. I know exactly what you need to do. And the voice that's going to come up for you while I go through this is exactly the thing that you need to conquer because this is what stops most people from ever succeeding. If you do the steps that I'm talking about in this video, your marketing for the rest of your business is going to be easier and be less expensive. Step number one is the most overlooked piece of any business, never mind SaaS, any business at all. You're stepping into the marketplace of trying to mold you into everything versus having everything mold around you. If you've built a business before that you hated, there's nothing faster to destroying your spirit and your whole life. It'll ruin relationships. It will turn everything upside down for you. The most important piece of any business is you. If you're running this and you don't have a huge team, and this is because you don't have this budget, so you're not profitable in another business, right? You're probably running this yourself. And if it doesn't revolve around you and who you are, it's going to suck and it's going to suck really quickly because it's unnecessary. That's what I want to say. So I talk a lot about a sphere. And if you've been watching any of these videos, you know that I talk about this golden sphere. But in the middle is the most important piece, and that is you. I want you to take a look at very clearly and very honestly, who are you at this time in your life? What do you want? What do you want? Not what do you need? What do you want? What is it that would make your heart sing? What is it that you really want? And what is it that you're willing to sacrifice to get there? This is really important for you to understand that you must sacrifice. You've got to get into a season of no in your life. You've got to take a look at what is your history? What is your training? What is a avatar that you're familiar with or an industry that you're familiar with. If you hate them, that's okay. Don't go that way. So what I'm hoping that you're hearing is that there is a sequence of questions that you need to ask yourself to get to a place where you're even ready to start taking a look at a business. Because most of you will just stumble out into the marketplace with a brand that's got nothing behind it, not even you, never mind your client, right? You need to be very clear on how much money you want. Any number is okay. Do you want a small team, a large team? Do you want to do this yourself? All of these are really important questions before you get out into the marketplace. I built a business, multiple six figures, growing a team of nine. I hated it. I, it grew fast. I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't a leader. I wasn't hiring well. And it was just a nightmare. But I had no idea that's where I was going never built a business before. No one asked me those questions. I could have framed my business different in the beginning and I didn't know how. The next thing is, what is the problem that you want to eat for breakfast? What's the problem around here? Great things happen when women have money. I'm going to fight every single day to assist women to make more money. It looks like go high level, but it's so much bigger than that. And I know that it's women that I want to serve. Who do you want to solve the problem for? What group of people are you passionate about? Because you're going to be talking to them all day, every day. And again, if you don't pick it, if you're not proactive out the front, you're going to hate your life. And there's no need for that. Step number two, the next thing you need to do is conduct market research. I get on calls with business owners all day long and I'm like, what did your clients say? Huh? 
They have no idea what's going on with their client. What problem do they want solved? What is going on for them? Who are they? What have they tried in the past? What's the language that they're using to get this, speak about this problem? What else is out there that they are attempting to help answer their questions or take care of that problem? And one of the things I really want to caution you on is, you think there is no competition or you think it's just go high level other agencies are your competition and both are well because the other agencies aren't going to go to your client over in st louis on main street right or they're not going to go into the helping a therapeutic offline business in florida like there's no competition there but where there is competition that you're not paying attention to. One of my favorite examples is Tylenol. You've got a headache. You think you're going to come out with ibuprofen. My only competitor would be Tylenol or other pain remedies. You're, you, no exercise, meditation, water. Imagine water, you're in competition with water. How do you stand out? So when you're thinking about SaaS, what problem are you solving? If it's a membership area, what are they using? Google Drive, right? Have you seen anyone's desktop lately? Like it's not Kajabi. So you've got to think about that. So you have to make it easy for them to actually implement and use your product as well. The really important part of the marketing research or your avatar or competitor research is to really understand the needs. And the way that you're going to understand the needs is you're going to get the language. You're going to speak like they speak. I've done this before multiple times. I've got big orange notebooks They're in Canada still. I didn't bring them with me to Mexico. I'd show you them where there were this many pages because I write funny and I write sideways. And I went through 15 interviews and I went back over it later and I highlighted mm -hmm. and it was the exact same phrases, the exact same phrases, the exact, and I didn't. Every woman was different. Every conversation ended up down a different road, but it was exactly the same thing over and over again. And that really propelled me forward in my marketing and in my ability to really speak to the avatar. If you don't do this work, you're going to have to pay. You're going to pay in dollars or you're going to pay in a tremendous amount of time. But what I'm concerned about is that you may pay with your business. You're going to run straight out into the marketplace and you're going to drown. Because it's not 2017. It is different. It is crowded. And you really need to know who is out there, what they're looking for and what they need. And then you mix it with you. You want to make $10,000 a month. You want to work from home. You want a team of three. You want to do all the marketing. You're going to need a tech person. And that you know exactly what it is that you're doing. And that's the most important thing. With this information in hand, you then go create that logo. You then go create that brand, the visual brand, because you will know what the brand stands for because you've got the wording and you've got an offer, right? You know what you're going to step out and do. Do not spend a lot of money on a logo, but at least get something that looks decent because in my experience, you're going to pivot. You're going to change. You're going to go get those first five to 10 clients and you're going to change. But there's no way that you can get out onto that road and prevent the change. You've got to get on the road and go. It's going to happen and, and it's a beautiful thing, but you don't know until you get on the road what's out ahead of you and who actually is going to show up. So I started building funnels and interestingly enough, I didn't even try to pick an avatar. It's just who kept coming towards me and I'm a Canadian and it was sexual health doctors in America. There is no way in hell I could have chosen that. First of all, Canadian and American healthcare is very different. Sexual health it was uncomfortable. I had to learn so much and talk about so much with people that it was it was incredible. I know, I know more about urology than I would have ever wanted to learn. But what a beautiful place to sit. It was fantastic. They really wanted to change their clients, customers, patients lives and I had a part of that so I learned that as I got on the road and started to serve and I suggest you do the same thing go and really have a sit down and talk with yourself to have the truth tell the truth then go sit down and have a real heart to heart with 5 10 15 people that you'd love to serve and then 
take a look at what you can offer, get on the road, go back to those 15 people you interviewed and said, I've got this now, would this be interesting? And see what they say. See you on the road. We've got a 30 day troll now. That's interesting. I thought that was really powerful. If you want to join me, if you're ready to get started. See you soon.